Yet uh, is money the root of all evil? No, actually, it's the love of money is a root of evil. Okay. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. So we're welcome, or we're excited, actually, to welcome you to another episode of Life's Inside Track. I'm Yetta Decker. I'm Ken Decker. And we're with... Roz. And Sean of Woodland Realty Investments. And so much fun. And we get to share techniques, thoughts, tips, and tools that we all deserve. You, I, everyone, so we can turn our house into home, our families thrive, and we live the best life possible. Mm. We're going to consider... That God will give you, will give you, Sean, you, Roz, you can, and you who is listening and connecting with us, he will give you a vision for your money and your life. And it may not be the same as everyone else's. Probably not. Right. You know, it's interesting in the Bible, it's over 2,000 times Mm. wealth, possessions, money, Taxes, treasures, treasure, all that is spoken about in parables and instruction. Jesus spoke about it over 2,000 times in total. The Bible speaks on it. And so, why is that? I think, well, actually, I'm certain. It's because we were going to struggle with it. We needed a lot of instruction because it was going to be an area that could trap us, could trip us up, would cause us all kinds of grief. So although I believe the Bible has a very general directive around vision, and we'll unpack a few scriptures um, around money, he does give different individuals a different focus in relation to money and wealth and resources and all of that. Now, that's never been a problem in your relationship, has it, Russ (laughs) and Sean? Sean? Never. What what happened when you started to get together and you you went to the pastor for your, what do you you call that? Pre-marriage counseling. Yeah. (laughs) How'd that go? Oh, so good. (laughs) (laughs) Until? Until we figured out that we were not on the same page or even in the same book or even in the same library about our money. (laughs) Wow. so our pastor, we we were there. Roz, we've shared this before. Roz wanted to rent and pay her bills and spend the rest, and I wanted to invest because I had no uh, pension or future savings. And at that point, you had how much money in your bank account? Uh, probably around negative forty thousand. Around just around, around that just negative forty thousand, give, give or take, give or take a penny or two. But no, I was negative. Um, I didn't know. If I had an idea of money. And Roz had an idea that she just wanted to live the way she wanted to live. So we went through our our marriage counseling, all these questions, and we did okay on all of them except for the one. And the one was money. And Roz, uh, we couldn't agree on anything. And Pastor Doug told us that he will not marry us on this. But we're like, well, we have nine out of 10 or whatever the number was. So 11 out of 12. 11 out of 12. <laughs> just that one. And like the other ones we probably could have worked with if we were off on those. But this one was pretty significant. Wow. So he said that one would sink you. That was it. He wouldn't, he just wouldn't have anything to do with so it. So it kind of aligns with what the Bible talks about. Money more than actually any other topic, I believe. It's like the number one area that's addressed again and again and again are money related things. Mm-hmm. And here it was the 11th out of 12 or the 12th out of 12 actually mm-hmm. that tripped you up. The other 11, you were good to go. Yes, exactly. So he um, had said that um, finance was the number one reason for divorce. Mm-hmm. And he, because we were so far apart that he knew we would never make it. And that was why he was going to refuse to marry us because he knew we wouldn't make it if we didn't figure it out. Wow. And so what did you do? Well, we went to a financial fitness seminar mm-hmm. where, I, uh, where we learned the biblical principles about what God says about money and debt. And, uh, I, this is a huge confession for me. It ended up that Sean was actually closer to biblical truth than I was. And I, I really had a hard time <laughs> accepting that. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty happy. Sean, pretty if you're not watching this because you're listening <laughs> on the radio, you couldn't see the biggest, <laughs> cheesiest smile that ever existed on the face of Sean Woodland. And it just up. existed. And two thumbs up this time. <laughs> and two thumbs right. up. So if you want to watch, it's actually kind of humorous to watch Life's Inside Track. Just tune into our 
YouTube channel at Decker Team, and you will see more antics than you can <laughs> not see because you can't <laughs> hear them while you're on CHRI mm. or any of the audio podcasts, right? Sorry, Roz. I just couldn't let that moment pass. Absolutely. It was quite beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. But it was, you know, we've been married for almost nine years. It was probably time for me to confess that to him. So. Confess <laughs> to Sean it's that good for the he soul. was closer yes. to I, truth. Yeah. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> You've learned some things there too. Yeah. yeah so right. that was how many years ago? Eight, nine? Nine. Nine, nine, nine years nine ago. ago. Yeah. And what was that? Dapper presenter wearing <laughs> this amazing purple shirt that he's wearing right now. <laughs> We're gonna jump on YouTube if you want to see this purple. I gotta see the shirt. shirt. Right? What did you actually say to Sean that day as you were watching Ken present? Well, we were getting ready to be married. We took the financial fitness seminar before and Sean didn't have a shirt yet. And we put in our invitation to please wear purple so you could be part of the living decor. And I said, you need to ask that guy if you can borrow that shirt. <laughs> so I'm not asking a stranger if I can borrow his shirt. And I said, do you want I me to? give him the shirt off my back. <laughs> he said, do you want me to ask him? I said, no. <laughs> it was a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't know for quite a few years that you wanted the shirt off my man's back. That's right. Yeah. Well, the good news is nine years and it still fits. Yes, you that is. You haven't shrunk it. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the problem, right? Yeah. And so, if you're thinking you want to get in on this crazy wild ride in our community, the Decker Team community, you'll want to send us an email together at DeckerTeam.com so we can stay connected and grow in community because you never know from a simple little wealth building workshop that was the setup for you even to be permitted by your pastor. I mean, you could have gone against and not been obedient. Mm -hmm. But if you were going to be obedient, that was the only way you were going to get married. Absolutely. To where we sit today. You've learned a lot about money. Absolutely. We've learned a lot about money from you guys. What are some of those core scripture, maybe one core scripture, that really taught you the value of how to use and not use your money or what was required of you in relation to resources maybe is a better question. Well, I've mentioned it before, but it was unlearning, letting go of my limiting beliefs about money. I struggled with the idea of wealth and being good, that they, they were not harmonious, right? I wasn't raised in wealth and you know, that felt like the way we were supposed to live. So it was better to be in lack. It was better to be in lack. And because you, you can't be wealthy and, and do good, it seemed wrong. And it was until I, you know, learned that the, um, the well done, good and faithful servant is at the end of a parable about investing. Say more about that. Well, the, you know, the vineyard owner leaves and he gives one talent, two talents and five talents to three different people and then returns after a time. And he says to the two that doubled the money or doubled the talents, well done, good and faithful servant. And the one that buried it, he had admonishing words for. Right. So then I realized like, oh, we're supposed to do this. God has called us to do this. So in obedience, we're going to learn what he wants. Mm -hmm. Sean mentioned that he was minus 40. I declare bankruptcy twice. So our wealth story is all God has nothing to do with us because clearly we weren't doing a good job. About anything. About anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, are your beliefs mm -hmm. serving you and are they yeah. true? Are they truly true? And we're delighted that we can be with you, positioning you to build wealth wisely. It's about much more than money. Moving forward with the Decker team.